Hi, Michael Kwan here with Mega Tech News here in Las Vegas for CES 2014. In our third episode, we're gonna take a look at the broad range of kind of the uh, consumer electronic products that we see here at the show, starting with the expansion of the Wemo line at Belkin. We're at the Belkin booth, and uh, some of you may already be familiar with the Wemo home automation stuff. We've talked about the switch and the light switch, but here at the show, uh, the family has expanded with a few new products. That's right, that's right. Yeah, the basic idea of Wemo from the very beginning was we wanted to go after the home automation market and we wanted to do it in a way that we had products that were really simple and really easy and really bite-sized so that anyone could go into home automation. And so we've expanded that line and we've got a whole bunch of new options for people to start automating their homes. Yeah, so what, what are some of the new additions to the family okay. for the show? Well, um, we've been doing the Wemo switch for a while and the Wemo light switch we launched uh, just a few months ago. What we're launching at the show is the Wemo Insight Switch. The Wemo Insight Switch is the next version of our switch. And the Insight Switch actually monitors the electricity usage of whatever's plugged into it. And so what it can do, I'll give you a couple examples. So I have a refrigerator in my garage and I've got four little kids and my little kids will go into the garage, they'll take something out of the garage, they'll come back in, they'll eat it and they'll leave the refrigerator door open. So with this, it's plugged in, it'll say, oh my goodness, your electricity usage on your fridge has been going high for the last five minutes. It'll send me a notification, and then instantly I know, okay, my kids left the door fridge or the refrigerator door open again. So it's just another approach to home automation, and it's really easy, it's plug and play. You plug it in, you attach it to your router with your app, and then you're good to go. And I, I noticed that even physically, it's redesigned, it's much more compact. Right, it's the idea is to make it smaller so that you can actually pick or fit two devices onto the two adjacent uh, outlets as well. So on the other wall, we have our LED light and our LED light is using Zigbee, but honestly it doesn't matter and consumers shouldn't care about it. The key thing is you can switch out any light bulb, plug this light bulb in, and then instantly you have connectivity to the internet of your light bulb and you can control it from anywhere with your smartphone. That's great, so that's some of the new introductions to the Wemo family, but I understand that you have some great partnerships with small appliances too. That's right, and even some ways for consumers to make their own products with Wemo, which is really neat. In addition to the Wemo branded products, you've also have partnerships from some small appliance makers. That's right, uh, Wemo has announced today um, Wemo Smart, which is basically a module that any appliance maker can take and put into their appliance in order to make their uh, appliance work and connect to the internet and then remotely controllable. So, so a couple of examples here, we have the coffee maker. Yeah, actually the Crock-Pot is the first one that's gonna be launching. Our first partner is a company by the name of Jardin and they're a house of brands and one of their big brands is Crock-Pot, which is a huge brand. And the Crock-Pot idea is really simple. I don't know if you've ever gone through this experience of set your slow cooker in the morning and you're like, oh, I'm gonna be home at five o'clock, so I'm gonna set it at this temperature. And then all of a sudden in the middle of your day, uh-oh, five o'clock becomes seven o'clock. And then what do you do? You have to call your spouse or significant other or you just overcook your food. So the idea with the, the uh, slow cooker from Belkin, Wemo with Crock-Pot is that you can remotely control your uh, slow cooker and then just set it to say, hey, I'm not going to be home at s until 7 o'clock now, so adjust the temperature throughout the day so that it'll be ready when I get home, not for when I thought I was going to be home. Yeah, so that, that's great because then it still works with the same Wemo app that you have on Android and iPhone. And Absolutely, it works on the same app. And we've also done the exact same thing with coffee makers. They're going to be launching it with humidifiers, with console heaters, and with air purifiers as well. And so um, basically, all parts of your home we're going to be enabled through, to be automated with the uh, Wemo app and with this little module. And that falls right in line with the Wemo philosophy of, you know, you add the pieces that you need along the way. Exactly. And to those people who still aren't getting what they need, we've even started a bit of a DIY model. So we have on the very end something called D, uh, the Wemo Maker. And the Wemo Maker lets you plug whatever you want into it and then have that remotely controllable. So for example, you can take off your garage door clicker and um, instead mount the Wemo Maker on it and you plug in the two little wires that go into your garage door clicker into the Wemo Maker and then automatically your garage door is no longer just a clicker it's also remotely controllable by your smartphone so another way that we're enabling you to very simply go after little tasks in your home automate them have remote control with your smartphone
And this is a great way for Belkin to learn how people really do want to use Wemo. That's right, and that's part of the magic of IFT as well, because with IFT, we were basically trying to seed stuff so that people could come up with their own inventive creations for how to use Wemo, and then we look at the recipes that people are using most, and then we look at ways that we could implement it and integrate it into our products even more. And that's going to be something that we're going to be doing on an ongoing basis as we go forward. We're visiting with our friends at Diamond Multimedia. They have some great new products that they want to show us. Uh, the first thing we have here is an update to their wireless range extenders, the WR600 NSI. It's a dual band repeater, so no matter what kind of wireless network you have at home or at the office, it's a great way to be able to extend that uh, network. To anywhere that you would normally have a dead spot, maybe you want to have wireless coverage in the backyard or in the garage. I, I personally use mine in the back backyard during the summer because it's great for bar barbecues and that kind of thing. So you still have coverage in the back. And there is a wired connection there as well, if you wanted to connect anything wired. Next here we have the MDS 3900s, a dual head mini dock uh, adapter. So then like, what's great is that we had that larger dock be be before, but this is a much smaller version. So it's great for you to take on the road. You add a single USB 3 connection uh, back to your, probably to your laptop for mo most people. And then you get an HDMI and DVI there as well as a wired e ethernet port there. So it's a great way to be able to use the display link technology, use a couple of monitors, uh, connect to your networking, and a great little portable package. Uh, we have a couple of other products that we want to show you, so let's head over there. Many of us are working to cut the cable in our homes. We don't want to pay those expensive fees when there's so much free content that we can get through the internet and the stuff that we download. And what Diamond is working on here is a network TV tuner. Nice little kind of set-top box kind of idea. And what you do is, there's a single HDMI output as well as some legacy stuff here so that you can connect it to your monitor or to your TV via your network and be able to watch all that great content that you have on the internet, you know, with NBC and HBO and all, and all this kind of stuff. So it's a great way to be able to watch the shows that you love, even when you may not have the greatest uh, TV coverage in your home. And there's one more thing that we want to show, so let's go over there. Many of you may already have a great sound card in your desktop, or even if you don't, or with your notebook. You want to still have that great high definition surround sound, and one of the great solutions to do that is an external sound card. And what we have here is from Diamond Multia, they call it the Extreme Sound 7.1, and as you can probably guess, it gives you 7.1 surround sound. There is optical in and out for the audio, as well as you know the usual kind of inputs here that you can see right here so that you can connect your 7.1 surround system or if you have you know, a great set of headphones like the, the Beats here, you also have the headphone jack right there. It's a great kind of premium feel with the silver finish and you have the volume controls here and uh, that's the Diamond Multimedia Extreme Sound 7.1, a great easy way to get your high definition surround sound. That wraps up a quick overview of some of the great products here at Diamond Mobile. Tech News, we're here at the International CES with Seagate. Uh, we already know the company a lot for their portable hard drives and all that kind of stuff, and we have a lot of that, but we need more storage, and we want to have more to be able to plug, plug into our uh, computers, and you have a great new product here that expands on that. This guy here is the first of its kind. It's a first, first four terabyte portable drive, completely bus powered, and basically what we have here is two drives in a RAID 0 enclosure and you're getting two times the capacity at two times the uh, performance of any other portable drive. So four terabytes at 220 megabytes per second, all portable. Just plug in and go and it works with all the existing Seagate software and all that kind of stuff? Absolutely. We actually have a refresh to, a, to the uh, dashboard that we'll show you here. But basically, exactly what you said, plug in and go, done. And do you have any information in terms of MSRP, re, uh, retail availability? Yeah, so it's going to be available in early February, and it's going to MSRP for $299. This is the new Backup Plus Slimline, really focusing on backing up, simplicity, and we've had Backup Plus products in the past. This is just a new version of it. Basically, we go everywhere from a 500 gig version all the way up to our new 2 terabyte version. So this is 2 terabytes right here. Again, really slim, really easy to use, really nice looking. And what we're doing is actually giving the customer a little bit more of a premium finish here on a mainstream price point. So for these guys, 119 for the, uh, sorry, 99 for the 500, 119 for the 1TB, one and 179 MSRP for the 2 terabyte. Great, and like you said, there's an update to the dashboard on the software side. Yeah, so let me show you that. We took what was really successful in the past and just said, okay, let's learn from what we can do a little bit better. So um, PC backup, same easy to use software we had in the past. Uh, we still associate with the social media integration, so we have that as well. The big part of it is now the mobile backup. And what we also have is uh, an app for both iOS and Android, both free. And you can see there, it's right there. And what we can do 
is I'll show you how that works right now. We'll just sit here, take a couple pictures, go back to our app, and there's two ways of doing this. I'm gonna show you one of them, which is the Wi-Fi version, which is going directly to the product that's plugged in over here. This device and the computer are both on the same Wi-Fi, so it's going from here directly to here, and what you're gonna see in a second is you're gonna see the pictures actually start to show up as it backs up. So again, directly within the home, just directly right to that drive. If you're outside the home, there's another way you can do, which is using a cloud service like Dropbox or Google Drive. So if you're outside the home, you send that to the cloud for a little bit, and then it goes down to the drive when that's done. So everything's saved in one nice spot. So it effectively mirrors almost what you're uploading to the Dropbox or Google Drive through that way. Yeah, you can actually keep it in both places, or once it's gone down to the drive, it will actually automatically delete. You can make that choice in the settings. Yeah. You remember when we first saw the Seagate Central at last year's CES, and I've been using it like for the last nine months watching videos on my own TV, but now there's a new partnership expanding uh, to work with Ro Roku. Right, and so, so we're now excited to announce that we're gonna be launching a Roku app for the, the uh, Seagate Central, and so you'll be able to stream all of your content from your Seagate Central directly to our Roku app, which will be a Seagate media app on Roku platform. This basically builds upon the existing partnerships you already have with Samsung and the other apps that you've had before. Right, and so what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a more media-focused interface so that we, rather than looking at um, file folders on a TV, we want to let your, basically let your media shine. And so we want to be able to have a more visually appealing um, you know, user interface, and that's why we've created specific apps for these popular TV platforms like the Samsung TV, and then now this, um, the Roku app will be our sort of our second TV platform. And we believe that with an app, you can actually have a much better experience than you would if you were just streaming your content through DLNA. I guess it would have the same kind of support in terms of uh, videos as well as photos and music. Exactly. So you can stream your videos, um, music, um, photos, slideshows. It's great. So it just shows that, you know, the Seagate Central has been out for nine months, but Seagate is still working to make it a bigger and better experience for all of us. The wireless storage category was kind of created with the GoFlex satellite and it grew with the Wireless Plus and now there's the Lacy Fuel that kind of builds on that too. Absolutely. So this is the Lacy Fuel right here. It's a one terabyte mobile hard drive. It's got a 10 hour battery on it and it creates its own Wi-Fi network so you can connect up to five different Apple devices to it. Um, share do three HD streams at once to three different devices. AirPlay compatible. You can go right from your, you know, your iPad to an Apple TV very easily. Um, pretty cool please and uh, this will be shipping this month. Can you tell me maybe a little bit more about why someone would choose this over some of the competing products in the same category? Absolutely, so some of our competitors were, like I said, one terabyte. Most of our competitors in this field are maybe 32 or 64 gig, which is pretty nice, but you can fit hundreds of movies on here, thousands and thousands of songs and photos, and always have it with you. We also have a 10 hour battery life, which uh, is, the, is the highest of all of our competitors as well. But probably the biggest difference is the app. So once you turn this on, you kind of, you know, you put it in your bag, or on the table and you really interact with fuel with the app and our app shows you cover art metadata it's a very rich experience you kind of just touch onto whichever one you want to connect to you can watch your movies access your your music with cover art uh, and song listings where most of our competitors actually do a file base so it's kind of dry there's no cover art just kind of file names um, you have a much better experience with the app which is probably one of the main key differences so that sounds great for, for example, when you're on a flight or on a road trip. Absolutely. So if you're in an airplane, kind of like our simulation here, um, you and your buddies can all share movies right off of this one device uh, and even internet. So if you're connected on the internet somewhere, this can pass that internet to all the other five devices as well. Oh, so it does have the internet pass-through just like uh, with the Wireless Plus. It's just like Wireless Plus, it has internet pass-through. Another key difference that this has, unlike uh, Wireless Plus at the moment, is Dropbox integration. So if you have a bunch of stuff in the cloud, you can have your Dropbox synchronized right to your field device, and all those files that you have on your Dropbox are always with you. And if you make any changes or delete a file, the next time you go online with uh, Fuel, it will connect to Dropbox and make those changes, so you're always synchronized between both, both the cloud and your drive. We're here at CS 2014 at the Kingston booth, and uh, I have my friend Dave here, and uh, there's there's a big push towards 4K video now and yeah. people want to have memory that can keep up with that kind of speeds and you have a new SDXT card that uh, 
addresses that. Yeah, yeah, we do. You know, 4K is becoming more and more mainstream. You know, like companies like GoPro are releasing cam uh, 4K cameras for as little as, say, you know, $400, right? There's also uh, new forms of HD. There's Ultra HD, you know, and, and then, you know, the 4K, 2K. Um, there's so many different formats out there. So what Kingston has done is we create, you know, we're launching a brand new card in a couple of weeks here that addresses that. So the SDXC um, card that we're launching is uh, fits a specific spec from the SD Association. It's called UHS-1 uh, Class 3. So it means it's a minimum 30 megabytes per second read and write, which is what you need to record 4K video. The card that we're releasing actually goes 80 to 90 uh, megabytes uh, uh, per second on the read writes. So it's you know more than adequate for that. So it, it makes sure that you know no matter what kind of bit rate you want to run with your video that the and whatever camera that you're using, you have no trouble recording that. Yeah, that's right. You know, with the higher transfer speeds and everything, because you know, 4K video is gonna it, it chews up a lot of uh, memory, right? You know, and, and it's like somebody told me it's something like a, maybe a, a minute uh, of footage could be as much as a gigabyte. So, you know, when you're running at that speeds, you can't afford to have your card as a, a choking point. Uh, and what kind of capacities and price points should we be expecting? Yeah, the price points are still uh, to be determined because we're still a couple of weeks away. But we're gonna start at eight gig and go all the way up to 64 gig on this cards. So you have a new OTG uh, drive. We do, we do. You know, on the go, refer, uh, the OTG drive or, or on the go refers to you know mobile devices that um, have a uh, on the one side is a USB connector, on the other side is a micro USB connector. And what it does for the user, really, at the end of the day, it's quick, easy transfers. You know, before um, if you have an Android tablet or or an Android phone, if you're trying to move data on and off there, you know, you're probably doing uh, one of a one of a couple of things, right? Uh, there's a slot there for like a micro SD card or an SD card so you can always fill up a card uh, and, and put that in their slot or you know you can use like a, a wireless reader you know Kingston makes those too and then now what we've come out with is essentially it's a USB drive that's kind of a two-in-one one One side is the USB connector the other side is the micro and all you got to do is just you know if you plug it in let's say you plug the USB 2.0 connector into the PC put, put a bunch of movies videos photos whatever that is you know and then you can pull it out off your computer stick it into your device and you can read you know, off there from there. And this is slated to come out uh, in a couple of months. So late Q1, early Q2. And as you can see on here, that here's the USB connector on one side. We have a little bit of a cap covering the micro USB connector. Again, as a prototype, the design, the final design could change too. So, you know, this part is a little plastic here, um, and obviously the USB uh, connectors are, are metal. So, um, you know, things may change here. But let me go ahead. I, what I've done here is I've preloaded some content on here. I put some movies, I put a few uh, songs, and I put some pictures in here. And I'm going to go ahead and plug in the micro USB side into the ASUS tablet. Data Traveler is what we call our USB drives. This is called Data Traveler or DT for short, DT Micro Duo. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. As you can see, the folders that are on the USB comes up. And it's got some pictures, you know. Here's Central Park. Here's Caesar's Palace because we're here in Las Vegas. As you can see, we, you know, it, it looks, it, it's pretty fast, right? These are pictures all coming off of the USB. If I go backwards and put some music, uh, let's put a song on there. Let's do um, Sarah Bareilles. You can hear that. So it's it's playing music right off of the drive itself. And let's do the Avengers. See, it came up pretty fast. Yeah. Very very little of any latency at all. And one of the cool things about this too is I can go ahead and skip ahead. As you can see, I'm about roughly a little over an hour into the movie. So it's very fast, right? Yeah, there's absolutely no delay. It's, it's as if it was right on the internal me memory. Yeah, it really is. It, this actually, it works very, very fast. You know, it's USB 2.0. And it, which is more than fast enough because, you know, a lot of people have asked us, hey, what about USB 3.0? And you can do USB 3.0 on here, but a lot of, most of the, the Android tablets and devices that are on the market today, you know, have the 2.0 port. So there's really no need to, to go to the faster speed. It's not going to change anything. And as you saw from here, you know, that the song started immediately, the pictures popped off immediately, you know, the Avengers started right away, the movies. So it's really fast for the user. So obviously we're still a couple of months out, so pricing is still TBA, but can you tell me about the kind of capacity we should be expecting up to? Yeah, you bet. Uh, we'll start this at eight gigabytes, so we'll have an eight, 16, 32, and up to a 64 gigabyte uh, uh, you know, uh, capacities on this. And we're looking at this coming out in roughly um, 
uh, late Q1, maybe early Q2. We're in the Rosewell suite checking out. They have a wide range of uh, different products for all kinds of different purposes, but uh, something that's really near and dear to my heart and something that's uh, very useful for all the mobile people out there is they have a full range of uh, power banks. These are the USB uh, batteries that you can take with you on, on the go that allow you to charge your smartphones and your tablets to make sure you get all kinds of juice. So this one right here, it's the largest of the bunch with 13,000 milliamp hours. It has the 2.1 amp output, so it works great with your tablets. You can see it has the indicator lights here so that you're able to see how much more power you still have remaining. There's also an LED lamp in there. So moving down the range here, you get something a little bit smaller, also in the black and the white with 11,000 milliamp hours. There's a thin and light version here uh, with 5,000 milliamp hours. So uh, this one will only have the one app charging, so it won't be quite as useful for uh, tablets and that kind of thing, but it's great for smartphones and you can just see how thin and light that is. Like about the same size as you, you would have with uh, like an iPod Touch or something like that. And also has the indicator lights and the, and the LED light for, uh, for a flashlight. But my personal favorite, it just happens to be the smallest one. It may only have 3,500 milliamp hours, which is enough to charge your phone one time over. But one of my personal favorite features here is in addition to having the regular, there we go. In addition to having the regular USB port for you to you know, plug in whatever you need to charge, it actually has a built-in micro USB cable. So that when you're on the go, you don't have to carry around an extra cable and you can plug that straight into your phone. And uh, it's, it's great because it's the nice thin form factor, nice and small, so it's a lot easier to pocket and you have the built-in cable. So that's great for when you're on the road. Uh, all of these are available now and uh, the pricing starts at $29 for the smallest one. So we go from $29, uh, $39, $59 and $69. So that gives you a nice full suite of different capacities and price points for all the different uh, power bank products here at Rosewell. Uh, we have some other great stuff here that we want to show you at the suite. So let's ha head on over there. Here at the show, uh, Rosewell has uh, shown off a new line of surveillance cameras and you can see the full line here They come in different form factors some with a dome some in more of the bullet kind of style and uh, One of the great features that all of them have is uh, demisting so you can kind of see this is one of the models here But all, all, all the ones that you just saw that have this feature It's called demisting and when we look in the box here, we can't really see uh, Mario or Luigi hanging out in the road there but if you look at the monitor that is showing what the camera is actually seeing, you can see quite well. So then even though some of these are more designed for indoor use, they can also be used for outdoor, which I think is great if you want to keep an eye on a parking lot on a foggy day or something like that. And that gives you a great sense of being able to you know, keep eye on your stuff, great for business, and even just for home security. So the price will range uh, between some of the different models, starting at $69 and going all the way up to $149 uh, with slightly different feature sets, and you can expect all of those to launch uh, in Q4 this year. So we have one more thing that we want to show you, so let's head over there. You may remember uh, when we went into the kitchen with Rosewood with their induction cooker and their hot water kettle, uh, showing some of the different things that you can cook with simple appliances. And they've expanded that line somewhat. They have, there's an update to the in induction cooker here with uh, more simplified controls, so it's a little bit easier for you to use. They also have an air fryer, so you don't need to use oil to deep fry your fries or uh, Cornish game hens and things like that. And there's also a rice cooker. Mm -hmm. But one of our personal favorites uh, is their new popcorn maker. Mm -hmm. So you can see that it has kind of a retro kind of appeal here that automatically makes you think of popcorn with the red and uh, the off-white kind of color. Uh, the lid here can actually be flipped upside down and you can use it as a bowl to hold the pop popcorn. You know, very easy to use. It is just a popcorn maker, but it's a great no novelty item and it's a great thing to have uh, in time for the holidays. And that's exactly why the plan right now is to have it launch in Q3, just in time for you to have a nice hot bowl of popcorn when you're gathering around the fireplace with uh, your family. So, so that gives you a good sense of the broad range of products that you can see at a show like the International CES in Las Vegas. I'm Michael Kwan for Megatech News. Thanks for tuning in and we'll have one more episode for you to see very soon.